Hi everyone, it is so lovely to be back up on stage and seeing real people uh, in real life. Like it's cool that all of you have torsos and like legs <laughs> instead of just faces on a screen. Um, so hi, that was like a great intro so I don't have to talk about myself too much. Um, but yeah, I'm a designer, front end developer, been doing WordPress for a while and actually I, I, I realized today, I kind of did the math and today is my uh, 50th WordPress event that I've been speaking at. So I'm really excited to be sharing that with all of you. Ow. Thanks. We'll see if you want to clap afterward, it's fine. <laughs> um, but I, I want to talk to you all about the future of theme design because as a theme designer, that's kind of important to me and a whole lot's been happening and people have a lot of opinions about that. Uh, but before I get into the future of theme design, I kind of want to step back through a little bit of the history of themes uh, so we can remember how we got here so that we know where we're going, right? So. Historically speaking with WordPress, uh, themes were basically these very cohesive templates that were generally separate from the content. And that was basically the whole point of themes uh, because the content was now in your database and your, your theme was powering the output and that meant you could update your content without having to update code. That was like one of the best parts of content management systems. And the way it worked was that your theme was managing your look and feel, the structure, the way that everything laid out, uh, your content, your words and images and media, those lived in the database base or they lived in files and then you started adding plugins to add new functionality. Uh, it wasn't always this perfectly cut and dry but this was basically the way that WordPress was set up when it started. And in this state, you know, when, when themes were like this, what was the role of a theme designer? Uh, I kind of said that the theme designer was basically the design dictator here, right? Because we were, as a designer, we were dictating the use of color, typography, spacing, branding. You know, we were building, like, what exactly is this header going to look like, the footer, the sidebar, all of our page templates, our page layouts, where is content going to be used within the layout, which content needs to be where. Like, the designer had a lot of control over what was ultimately going to be rendered on the page. But then slowly, as many of you remember, uh, websites began to do more, right? WordPress started out with posts and with pages, but we, we wanted more than that. So sites started to become stores, sales funnels, uh, membership sites, social networks, event hubs, learning centers, communities. Uh, and the basic template and content model started to get a little bit of strain. So as a result, what happened? Um, well, layouts kind of needed to start evolving as content was changing, right? It wasn't just text on a page anymore. Um, we started needing stuff like landing pages and other kind of bespoke content to be able to speak to different audiences. Um, there were a lot more complex functionality needs. You know, once you have products or testimonials or users, you want to be able to lay those out in different ways. And there were a lot fewer options to build these unique layouts without learning code, right? I mean, the number of people that are like, I just want three columns in a row with an image on top of each one, how do I do that? And the result of this was a lot of end user frustration, not being able to make these things that seem like simple changes. And there was also a little bit of resentment about like our, our developers kind of gatekeeping us, are they preventing us from being able to do simple things? So we tried a lot of different things as a community to try to solve some of these problems. So what did we do? Um, we, you know, we tried like widgetized themes. That was one of the first approaches to it. Like we've got these widgets, maybe let's put them everywhere. Uh, we tried um, to rely a lot on short codes. You know, can we build things using short codes? And a lot of uh, big page builders were using short codes as well. Um, we used a lot of customizer-based themes. So there's a lot of options in the customizer. Um, custom fields really rose up and stuff like advanced custom fields, of which I'm a, a huge fan. You know, can we use this to craft maybe more custom content layout experiences? Um, each of these things, and, and then obviously the page builders, of which there are several, right? That was kind of a very big one. And each of these things, they each had their strengths and weaknesses. They had, they had pros and cons. They were doing the best they could. Um, and people tended to get opinions about which one was their favorite. Um, but part of the problem here is that there were so many different solutions that the WordPress content editing experience became really divided. You know, if you asked one person what using WordPress was like and asked another person what using WordPress was like, you would get totally different answers. And, you know, if you go to different dashboards, as you might have as a professional, they might not look anything like somebody else's dashboard. So we, we had a lot of splintering. Um, 
So block-based editing was introduced as a way to start to unify this editing experience for all of these different use cases and provide a, a visual and procedural set of standards for all of these different needs. Uh, we wanted to make the content editing experience more closely resemble how the content was actually going to look on the page and let people be able to do some of these more creative and more complex layouts without feeling like they were beholden to a developer. So the first phase of this was the introduction of the block editor, uh, which has now been available in core for content editing for over four years. Uh, though it's not perfect, it has undergone a lot of changes in that time to make it more stable, more usable, and more intuitive. And that brings us up to uh, kind of where we've been at the last couple years. And a lot has happened in WordPress theme and content management since the last time we were all like gathered together in a space. So I wanted to make sure that we're all up to date and kind of what happened during COVID. A lot has happened. Um, first of all, currently, uh, we've had seven major releases of WordPress during COVID. Um, we are currently in phase two of four of kind of the road map for WordPress, uh, which is centering currently around full site editing. The previous phase was around you know, the block editor and how to, how to build that. Um, two new core themes have been released in that time, so 2021 and uh, 2022, which was the first dedicated full site editing theme. Uh, we've also introduced like a whole lot more core blocks, so uh, including site level blocks that let you actually build site layouts in addition to just page layouts. Um, we keep getting more and more detailed block styling options, uh, including stuff like typography, color, spacing, layout, um, and also the widgets that we talked about before have also been converted to blocks. And um, then uh, block patterns were introduced, which is a collection of blocks. Uh, query loop block and all of the block options that came with it became more robust. Um, and then we also now have uh, the block directory and the pattern directory to be able to search for individual blocks or individual collections of block patterns. Now patterns being you know, predetermined groups of blocks that you know, let you streamline your building process. And then this one you're going to hear about a lot from me in this presentation, um, but the theme.json file and all of the new kind of global styles and variables were introduced in 5.8, and then they introduced support for child themes, and then uh, style variations in the last couple of releases. And then the big one, full site editing, uh, got merged in in 5.9, which is supporting these new, this entirely new templating system for building WordPress sites. So this, this a lot has happened in the last couple of years, and this is where we're at now. Um, if you want to learn more about kind of where WordPress is headed and where it was coming from, you know, check out this link. It's a pretty, it's pretty good. Um, but I want to get back into what we're here for, which is uh, what is the purpose of a modern WordPress theme? Because if any of you have been following block editing at all, you might be feeling like, uh, I, I don't really know where this is going. Um, and for the average end user, when we think about a WordPress theme, uh, modern themes are pretty far from these like mysterious black boxes that they used to be where you input content and then a custom layout just comes out the other end. Um, it's also, we're also pretty far from the days where you needed to have a complex uh, page builder system or a very uh, heavy plugin just to be able to create three columns with images and a button, right? Uh, nowadays, with full site editing, uh, the concept of even having predetermined templates is a little bit up in the air because a user could completely redo or rewrite or create new templates right from within their editor. Uh, so. In this, in this, like a modern WordPress theme, almost kind of feels like maybe it doesn't exist at all. So, in that case, like, what is the role of a theme designer now? You know, we're not a dictator anymore. So, who are we? Um, I propose that the new role of a theme designer is a creative curator. We still, we care deeply still about brand and aesthetics. That's why we do what we do. Um, but our methods and our audience have changed. So our job as a creative curator is to provide a thorough set of thoughtfully curated opinions, patterns, styles, layouts, templates uh, that actually function as suggestions for the end user to be able to build their content off of. 
And that includes a lot of different things that we should be providing, right? We're not necessarily building bespoke layouts. We do have to think about color typography and spacing. We have to take into account all of the different core blocks and some third party blocks. Um, and we want to create all of these rules for how all of these things combine uh, within the content and really help our end user be able to build these compelling layouts that are still understandable and on brand. So we don't just design the experience for the website visitor, which we've been doing as theme designers. We are also designing the experience for the content creators. We are curating the content building experiences to enable their guided creativity. So we're asking ourselves a lot of questions as designers. You know, are we, do we need full site editing for this? Do we need to support every single block style option? Um, how much control do we want to give the end user? And uh, how free or locked down should our content creation be, right? So as creative curators, uh, we can extend and enhance the block editing experience by providing maybe additional styles, patterns, and controls for blocks that already exist. Um, you know, so the questions we're asking ourselves are like, do we want to maybe create some block patterns or pre-populated blocks for our content within our theme? Uh, do we want these to be changeable or do we want them to be fixed? Uh, do we want to extend any of the core blocks that are already available with maybe some custom styles or controls? Do we want to provide multiple sets of styles? Are we including any styles from maybe some specific third-party plugins or other blocks? So then our job is we're not creating these pixel-perfect solutions anymore. We are creating comprehensive design systems where many future solutions can flourish. Because we're not just thinking about how do our design decisions impact our current content, we're thinking about how will our design decisions impact all of our future content as well. If you've ever heard me talk before, you know I love talking about design systems, and I'm going to do it again because they're great. Um, how many of you are familiar with the concept of design systems? Probably, probably a lot of you, which is awesome. Um, as a review, uh, this is a language from InVision. A uh, design system is a collection of reusable components guided by clear standards that can be assembled together to build any number of applications. And one of my favorite things to talk about when we talk about design systems, I think it gets increasingly relevant in WordPress, is atomic design. Uh, how many of you have heard of atomic design? Probably several of you at this point. Yes. Um, if you don't know about it, it's basically just like chemistry. So I know you all remember your high school chemistry, and this will be easy. Um, it goes from our least complex thing, which is atoms, then atoms become molecules, molecules become organisms, and then the metaphor breaks down because it organisms become templates and templates become pages. Um, but what you have to remember is that we're going from like the, the least complex to the most complex, uh, the smallest to largest, and the most general to the most specific. There's a fun animation here kind of showing how atoms evolve into molecules, which then evolve into organisms. And then these come together to become a template, which then becomes a page. So that's super fun. And we're going to be talking a little bit about this kind of as a review. So first of all, we've got atoms. Atoms are the smallest building blocks. And atoms, in this case, would be all of our HTML elements. Um, this is a really fun graphic that I found, the periodic table of HTML elements. Pretty clever. Um, but basically, you're noticing that it is all of your uh, unique HTML elements. But this also includes you know, your, your colors, your typography, your various utility classes. Those would all be considered atoms as well. Um, so as an example, and this is from uh, Pattern Lab, which is Brad Frost's uh, site. Brad Frost is the person who kind of coined the term for atomic design. You know, you can see an image, a heading, uh, color swatch, paragraphs, an input. These are all atoms. They are not very exciting on their own, much like atoms. They're just kind of floating there, not doing anything. But eventually, we can build some cool stuff out of them. And that's when we start getting into molecules. Um, where we are combining HTML elements together in uh, specific useful ways. So as an example, you know, maybe it's an image with a caption. Maybe it's a, a title with a link. Maybe it's you know, a small bit of uh, a list that is navigation or a, a photo matched up with maybe a title. So you're starting to see these, these start to look like stuff. These look like content. These look like content patterns. Um, still not that exciting yet. They're still kind of floating out there, not really doing anything. Um, but that's when we start getting into organisms, which is when we're now combining several different molecules together. Uh, and we're going to start recognizing these as maybe some block level elements, right? Um, but usually organisms are more complex, they're repeatable, and they're their own contained unit of content. 
So some examples might be uh, a gallery of images or uh, a list of several posts or an entire form with multiple inputs and a submit button. Those would be great examples of organisms. In the context of full site editing and templates as well, um, Variants of the same group of content would also be considered an organism. So these are like several variants of a header of a site, uh, each of which could be included inside a, a full site editing theme. Um, footers, sidebars, other similar things, you might have several different organisms. And that's when we also start getting into stuff like templates. Um, so if we're starting to combine these block level organisms together in different ways, we're starting to build templates, which are, again, repeatable combinations of organisms. And these often are entire layouts or entire content stories. So for example, like this, um, you might recognize some of these elements from some of the other pages, but now we're starting to combine uh, headers and content and sidebars and footers, and we have now started creating templates, right? These can be replaced with other things. And then we have pages, which is where you take a template and put real content into it. So again, you uh, have specific content, so uh, you could have the same template, multiple pages, Great example, here is a template, here is some content, right? So we're all following, atomic design makes total sense, great. So how has the move towards block-based content and full site editing made WordPress theme design more atomic? Because I think, I've been talking about atomic design for years, and I think as block editing has become more and more pervasive, this is more and more relevant. And in order to do that, I want to talk you through a little bit about the structure of kind of a traditional or a hybrid theme versus a new full site editing theme and kind of what we're looking at when I, when I start talking about these things. So first of all, um, this is a, a standard theme, which can also be used as a hybrid theme. A hybrid theme meaning you can, you're still writing PHP, but you can support a lot of the block content editor stuff. This is your basic file structure. There's a lot of other things. But you, know, you have your, your functions.php, your index.php, your style sheets, um, any other PHP templates that you want to support following the template hierarchy. Um, you have any, any other functions in your includes folder if you want to, any assets like CSS, JavaScript images you want to include, right? Um, and then you also have, uh, you can have a, a theme.json file. And again, I said I'm going to talk about it a lot because it's kind of a big deal. Um, and it is usable in PHP-based themes as well as in full site editing themes. So I think we should all be paying attention to that. And then you have a full site editing theme. And the biggest difference you'll notice is that uh, there's not that much PHP left anymore. I mean, you're still using it to write functions. But we have all of these like HTML markup block template things. And it's a very different structure now. You still have you know, your functions, your index, your style. Um, but all of your content now lives in templates and template parts. And it's a little bit different. And then we have this new folder called styles, which actually contains other JSON files if you want it to. Uh, so this is real exciting. So I just wanted to like kind of give an overview of these things, because depending on whether you're doing a hybrid theme or a full site editing theme, it might work a little bit differently. I wanted to bring just a little bit of attention to how styling themes works, uh, because some new things have been introduced, again, with the theme.json. So traditionally, you know, we're using a style.css and then also maybe an editor style.css now that we have the block editor. Um, these are both required uh, if you want your front end and your editor to look the same. Um, I guess you could also just enqueue your style.css in the editor, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because they have a few different needs. Um, but you can use these on their own. Uh, you can also, if you're using a theme.json file, use these to supplement that. I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I did want to also bring up the styling with theme.json. So this is the newest styling tool. Um, like I said, it can be used in both a hybrid or a full site editing theme. And what's cool about it is it automatically generates things that are loaded in both the front end and the editor. Um, it generates both uh, CSS variables and also CSS styles, depending on what part of it you're working on. Um, and it's, it's responsible for like most of the styles in full site editing. I say most because I think the ultimate intent is for you to basically be writing almost all of your styling in theme.json. I, as a CSS person, support where that's going, but am skeptical that more complicated things can be written in a JSON file as opposed to a CSS file. But it will certainly be taking care of the bulk of your styling in full site editing. So something to pay attention to. 
And now we'll get into actually how do we map all this atomic design stuff I just talked about to uh, WordPress theme itself. Um, so we kind of divide it into a few different categories. Um, I have you know your atoms, molecules, and organisms. I also put like kind of as a pre-atom. I have this thing called settings uh, that could be an atom, but I kind of think it's a little different because we're talking about you know editor settings, block options, stuff that's even kind of before you encounter an atom. And then we have our atoms, molecules, organisms, and then for layout, our templates and our pages. Um, I also want to mention, so I'm going to start showing some examples, and uh, most of my examples are actually examples that have the Gutenberg plugin activated. Uh, I know that that is you know, kind of the, the bleeding edge stuff that they're working on. I like to enable it for my personal stuff because I want to be, I want to be aware of what's coming, and generally it's a pretty good indicator of what's going to be coming next in core. So just so you know, you might see some stuff on here as examples that aren't necessarily in core now, but probably will be soon. So first of all, in our settings, uh, theme.json, there is uh, an entire kind of section of theme.json that is basically just about determining what the content editor is going to see when they are creating blocks. Um, this kind of replaced a good deal of the stuff that they were doing with add theme support. Um, but basically, this is these these things here determine if a if a particular control is going to be available in the editor. And there's a lot of controls that exist right now. Um, there is you know whether or not you want them to see a color picker, whether or not you want them to be able to pick font sizes or font families, whether you want them to be able to control border radiuses, whether you want them to be able to control spacing, all of those kinds of things. Now this isn't setting the values of those things. This is saying like can my user set custom values of these things, which is important because again designers were often concerned with branding. Um, so I provided an example of a you know, paragraph block, and on the left is with everything enabled so your user can do whatever they want, and on the right is a bunch of stuff turned off. And this is the same exact core block, and all we did is change whether they're true or false in theme.json. So this is really great if you have a pretty strict brand and you don't want your users doing like bright red giant text in a weird font, right? So we can, we can turn that off. So we have controls here even though this is still a custom editor. We also have options as theme designers to kind of extend the user interface for existing blocks by creating additional styles or settings. Um, so this actually helps kind of reduce the need to build a new block. So if you're like, I wish I had a paragraph block, but it just looked like this, well, maybe instead of creating a custom block for that, you could just create a style for that in order for your end user to be able to select that. So I kind of created, I showed an example of like, here's something that I did for the cover block where we have our, our default style, and then I also created a few other styles that have some special things and they just click on it and it, it loads. Um, so these are all different things. You can also create custom block controls for existing blocks. Uh, that the, the block styles are something that you, you can do within PHP, the controls you have to do within React, so um, depends on where your, where your stack is at. But this is something that I found to be really nice uh, for being able to give users more options without having to create more bespoke blocks. Then we get into our theme.json variables. So um, theme.json generates a lot of CSS variables, and CSS variables, if you're not familiar with them, are basically just uh, a, a value that is output in the in the like header in your CSS. Um, this is the format that they follow. So if you if you look at uh, the font sizes, for example, it would be you know WP preset font size slug name, so extra small as an example, and that's how it would output. Um, there are several different presets WordPress currently supports. I believe there will probably be more as time goes on, but they support a lot right now in terms of color, typography, layout, and spacing. And these ones you'll, you'll be able to recognize if you go inspect your editor because they will have that WP preset at the beginning of them. But these, again, are defining. These aren't outputting styles. They're not styling a specific element. They're just saying, like, here are the colors that are available. Here are the sizes that are available. Here's the widths that are available. This is what they are. We can reference them later. Um, Theme.json also supports creating your own custom variables, which right now I am using extensively. I think it's great. Um, you can create custom settings as detailed or as granular as you like. Um, 
I'm really in favor of doing this, whether you're doing a full site editing theme or a standard theme, uh, because you can basically create a single source of truth for all of your different values, and then you can reference that either in theme.json or in your style.css, and then as things evolve, rather than having to rewrite things everywhere, you can just like you know move stuff out of CSS into JSON, or maybe change the value in one place that'll update a bunch of other places. So I'm, I'm in favor of doing this. Um, as a methodology. And as more and more of these are supported as part of the preset styles, we can either move them out of our custom styles or just reference our custom style in our preset style. Uh, either way, it makes it a little bit easier to evolve. But this is the kind of, if, you, if you're looking, if you're inspecting a theme and you see WP custom and then a bunch of other stuff, that means it is a custom variable defined in this custom section of theme.json. Um, another thing, uh, so we're talking about elements. Remember, our atoms are HTML elements, stuff like headings and paragraphs and stuff like that. Um, there are several kind of block level elements that uh, theme.json will actually output styles. So this isn't outputting a variable. This is actually outputting CSS styles. Uh, so instead of writing the CSS, it'll do that. Um, I would recommend doing this if you're doing a full site editing theme. You can also take care of styling your elements within your CSS if you're doing a hybrid theme. Uh, but either way, you can reference some of these variables that we already created. So that is kind of all of our, all of our atomic things. And I'm showing you just like a bunch of unreadable JSON, which is totally fine. You don't actually have to be able to read this right now. But just kind of showing you as an example of like, what does this look like and where you're going to be looking, where you're going to be looking for it in your theme. Then we get into molecules. Um, so molecules, again, if you remember, they are combinations of atoms. Um, many of the simple blocks that you're going to encounter in both the content editor and full site editing would be considered molecules, um, where we've combined a few HTML elements into a more complex component. So you might recognize you know, quotes, lists, buttons, forms, uh, images, audio, post elements like the, the author, post meta, um, post summaries different navigation elements like the site logo, uh, taglines, menus, et cetera. Uh, I, I've included, and again, I'll have a list, uh, I'll have a link to all the slides afterwards. You don't feel like you have to panic and try to read all this stuff. Um, there's a link to kind of all the core blocks, and many of these would be considered molecules. Now, within theme.json, if you are doing full site editing, there is actually a styles section where instead of writing CSS to style these blocks, um, you can write JSON to style these blocks, and it will target a specific block. So if you know, you know the, the block slug, like the button one is, I think that's the one that I have as an example here, you, know, you can give it certain parameters that it supports. So you can style the border radius right from here by referencing uh, you know, another thing. You can style the typography, the font family, all this different stuff. Right from theme.json, it's kind of fun. Um, or you can do it in, in CSS uh, if you're doing a hybrid theme. But the point is that there are a lot of uh, support for uh, atoms and molecules like right in the JSON file. So that's pretty neat. Speaking of organisms. Now we get into uh, several different things, one being more complex blocks. Um, some blocks I would consider organisms that, you know, these are things that contain several other blocks. They're introducing complex functionality and other settings, uh, stuff like the you know, layout blocks, like the, the cover block, the column block, the group blocks, um, mixed media blocks, stuff like you know, galleries. Uh, the, the widget blocks, also query blocks, which are pretty powerful. Those are the ones where you're pulling in a whole bunch of posts into one block I would consider an organism. Um, and a lot of other custom blocks, these things that are you know, testimonials or like a, a slider or something like that. These are, these are generally considered organisms and these are more complex. Um, these don't necessarily have the, the core blocks you can style via theme.json. Most of these you're probably going to be writing styles for traditionally in style.css. But again, thinking of it atomically, these are our complex blocks. They're inheriting our styles from the atoms and molecules, and then they're just getting more complex. Uh, PHP template parts would also be considered an organism. So if you've been writing traditional themes, you know, uh, these are just you know, headers, footers, sidebars, different re repeatable bits of content that are included in our broader site. Um, kind of just an example of like, you know, here's where you'd see them in the theme structure. Um, also, full site editing template parts would be considered organisms. Again, headers, footers, and other reusable content. The difference being, instead of just being included as a PHP file, here they are, and they are selectable in the site editor. And you can see them. There's a whole template parts section. So that language is actually getting exposed to our end user, which is interesting. 
<laughs> um, block patterns I would consider an organism, and these are fun. So uh, commonly used groups of core or custom blocks that can be pre-configured and inserted all at once. Uh, I find them very useful. They can be defined either using register block pattern in PHP or um, you include them in the patterns folder and then list them in your theme.json file for uh, full site editing. Um, what about patterns, they show up in the same place that you search for blocks. They are tagged, they're sortable, they're searchable. Kind of an example here, uh, some patterns that I built into my personal theme. You know, you can sort them by type and then you, it's just like, you know, basically a combination of stuff that makes it really easy to build stuff. Um, Again, those, those three columns with images, text, and buttons, you could just build a pattern for that instead of expecting your end user to try to assemble that out of blocks. Um, reusable blocks, these are interesting. I'm not really sure, like, they had a really good use case. I'm not really sure where that use case is going as we move into full site editing, but basically what reusable blocks are is you can actually, like, create a block in the editor and then save it as a reusable block and then if you place it in any other spot, when you update the content in that block, it updates everywhere. It's kind of nice if you're building like a call to action or something. Not necessarily sure where this is going to go once we have now you know, let people build template parts and other things in the site editor. It may become obsolete, it might still be useful, but it's still a thing that exists and it's still a thing you should be aware of. Um, and that also, if you have any, will show up in the same block editor. Uh, so here's my really great call to action as an example. And this is just every, if I change the text anywhere, it'll change everywhere. And, and that's fun. Um, and then we get into templates, right? So now we're, we're combining all these blocks into bigger things. Um, both full set editing and traditional themes follow the template hierarchy. So they'll, you'll, you'll recognize that if you're familiar with it. Um, some of the PHP templates that you might be familiar with are standard, you know, standard page templates, whether those are template hierarchy or custom page templates you can select in the template editor. Um, also post type block templates. What I mean by that, if you've ever uh, used a plugin like the events calendar is a good example and you open up, they use the block editor and you open up a blank event and there's already a bunch of blocks on the page for you, that's a, a post type block template. Those are really useful as a, as a theme design to be in. Again, example of uh, PHP templates, there they are. And then also full set editing templates. So these are you know, the core templates you would expect. Um, they can be created custom or they can be assembled out of the full set editing template parts. So again, we're, kind of, we're building it kind of in a similar way to PHP, but these show up in the editor in the template section where you, they, you can see they have uh, template hierarchy names. So your single, your, in, your you know, index, your search, et cetera. And then we have the concept of pages in atomic design. Now, obviously, we think of pages as you know, a single page of content. But I would also argue that different views that are created by full site editing, so maybe like a, a, this specific page maybe has this content, but it also has this header and footer and sidebar configuration. That would be considered a page. Um, stuff to think about when you're starting to think about atomic design. I also wanted to mention one of the cool things that they started doing, and this is especially if you're doing, I think, like commercial themes or variable themes more so than bespoke client themes, is being able to include multiple variations of JSON styles within your theme. So uh, your end user would be able to switch between different styles without switching themes. That looks kind of like this. So in your site editor, it looks like this right now. There's, there's some... Uh, discussion on making this user interface a little bit more usable, but um, your end user would be able to go into the style section and be able to completely change what their theme looks like, and that's something that you as a theme person could include. Uh, I wanted to kind of close this by talking a little bit about, I mean, I said a lot of good stuff and how it works, but I, I did want to also address that there are kind of a lot of concerns and considerations when you're working with this right now. Um, this is, I mean, it's not bleeding edge technology from a, from like a technical standpoint. Like this is, the technology powering this is pretty tried and true, but it is still not even close to the most widely adopted form of WordPress interface. And a lot of it is still either officially in beta or basically still in beta, even if it's not. So there's a lot of things to be thinking about. And I wanted to kind of, um, Acknowledge that while I'm standing up here. Um, many elements of the block editor and full set editing are still in flux. Um, CSS class names might change, how core blocks are styled might change, different experimental APIs might change. Um, so I just wanted to present a series of questions 
that don't really have answers yet, but I do believe that these are questions theme authors are going to be thinking about in the near future. So one is like, how do we address freaking changes, <laughs> right? Because you know, I, I, I don't want to be, you know, it's hard to be shipping software that might break. Um, so things we're going to be thinking about, you know, how, how do we know when we should be using this? Um, how do we monitor these updates? You know, how do we provide support or updates if we choose to use new features, right? This is stuff we have to be thinking about. Um, where and how should we be defining our styles? I just gave you, I, you know, every other sentence was like, oh, you could put it in theme.json or you could put it in style.css, right? And instead of giving you an answer to that, I'm like, great question. <laughs> um, but we, you know, besides just deciding where we're going to style something, we have to think about, you know, how much are we going to be accounting for WordPress's core styles? Do we want to include them? Do we want to overwrite them? Um, how do we deal, if we want to include them, how do we deal with battling against their specificity in CSS, right? Also the question, you know, are themes supposed to be unique or are they supposed to be standardized? You know, if content are des and design are mixed, which they are, you know, what happens when themes change? Like, does that break something in your content? Um, how do we address these incompatible style issues between themes? Um, how do we address the assumptions that maybe third party blocks or plugins are making about what should be included in our theme? How long, how long is a theme supposed to last now, right? I mean, now that it's becoming more ambiguous, now that it can evolve along with our content, you know, are we even going to be changing themes? Or are we just going to change all of our options within the theme and just keep the same theme? Or are we going to be just like loading some new like JSON files and some new patterns in there and just like keeping our theme forever? Like how long are we supposed to be supporting this? And also, and this is you know the fun one. How are we supposed to learn all this new technology, right? Like, oh man, like I just I just learned WordPress, and I have to like learn new WordPress. Dang. I mean, there are there is a lot of new tooling involved. There's a, a new markup language. You know, you have to get familiar with JSON if you want to write blocks. You have to learn React. Um, you know, modifying anything with JavaScript, you're going to have to learn a whole bunch of build tools, or at least find a good framework that does a lot of it for you. And working with this stuff, it's a little bit harder to learn by reading. Because a lot of this stuff is a little bit obfuscated. You know, you used to be able to just like open up WordPress core and just like read the PHP file and be like, I see. Um, but now it's a little bit harder to kind of figure out where everything is and how it all works. You have to kind of work a bit harder to do it. That's a little unfortunate. But despite all of these things, you know, I my key takeaway here is that theme design might be evolving, but it is still a crucial part of the WordPress ecosystem. So I say, let's help people build creative content. Um, I have a list of resources, so these will be included in the slides, but different things if you want to learn more about design systems, if you want to learn more about the block editor and full site editing in general. But this is a slide to take a picture of. Um, here's me. Um, this is how you get a hold of me. This, uh, this link right there is where these slides are located, so that's the bit.ly link, Future of Themes 2022. Uh, if you want to find me next, I'll be at the social. I'm online on WordPress, Slack, and Twitter. And in person, I don't know whatever's next, but I hope to see all of you again. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Michelle. We have about uh, seven minutes for questions. If anyone has a question in the audience, raise your hand, and I'll come over to you. Okay. It was such an incredible presentation. Thank you. Very thorough. One? Oh, we I'm got sorry. one. Thank you. Yeah. Not thank quite you. as thorough. Oh, we go. Here, here they come. Here they come. All right. Thank you. Um, I'll answer a kind of similar question that I asked Rich in the previous talk is, do you think that uh, WordPress themes these days still have room to innovate in terms of the designs uh, with kind of the constraints that full site editing provides you of like, these are the options that core can let you change. Can you still create an innovative WordPress theme, do you think? So can you create an, an innovative WordPress theme? with all these constraints. I mean, I think that's been the question the entire time that theming has existed. Like, as things are standardized, can we be unique? Um, I would say yes and no. Uh, it depends on what you need. I think that there are certainly cases where you can create you know, pretty interesting and revolutionary ways. Like, what if you created styles that only happened when like two blocks were up against each other in a certain way? And if they were in a different way, they did something totally different, right? Um, what if we did things where we weren't just thinking about squares and we were making things more organic? We were giving things different containers. We were, I don't know. 
there's lots of ways to still be able to push things and be creative just because we're working with a standard set of blocks. And I know that there are ideas in the future, especially now that like CSS is going to be supporting container queries, which is very exciting. You know, that means that you can style something based on what it's inside rather than just based on the window. Um, that's very exciting. I think there's going to be a lot of potential for that. There's going to be a lot of potential for uh, understanding you know, the context of what block is inside or near or by another block and being able to style based on that. So I think we can do a lot of stuff if we're like forward thinking and thinking about like not just here is this block, how do you style it, but like what happens if this block is here? What happens if this block is here? What if it's here? I think then we can do some cool stuff. Awesome, thank you. And we have an online question. Oh, an online question. Christine. Oh man, okay. Yeah, Maestro Stevens is asking if you can touch a little bit more on the difference between using themes versus templates because it sometimes feels like it's used interchangeably and not necessarily right. Okay, so templates live within a theme. So the theme is the parent and templates are different things within a theme. So a template will probably render a specific page view or a specific type of, of outline. I, I mean, understand. Um, so yeah, think of the theme as the parent. It contains not only your templates, but also your styles, scripts, everything else it needs to function. And then the template is something that powers some specific layout. Hope that helps. Awesome. Did and that was an online question from Meister. I think I know him in Northeast Ohio. Awesome. <laughs> Last question. Oh, OK. No pressure. Um, with full site editing and blocks becoming more and more powerful, should we be focusing on building themes or just focus on building plugins that will add the blocks that we need to create the design that we want to create? Ooh, good question. OK. Um, I think that it makes sense to do both. So uh, uh, being able to control the theme means you're kind of controlling the kind of like main stack. And then being able to add plugins means that you can make that stack more extensible. So I think that most of the brand should probably still live in a theme. But perhaps that can be like very extensible in a lot of different ways with a lot of different plugins. So I imagine, I mean, this kind of happened before when we were doing you know page builder based things or custom field based things where we would have our theme but then when we wanted to do like all the cool stuff to the theme we would add all this other stuff on top of it i think blocks aren't aren't going to be that different than that okay thank you actually i do think we have time for another question if Ooh, encore more. all right great <laughs> i see you there you go Oops, excuse me um, thank you for your talk. It, it's really excellent. Um, I guess I'm wondering, this is all, a lot of this is pretty new, um, and where would one go if one wanted to just start playing around with this theme.json, you know, this, this whole ecosystem? Like, is there kind of a starter theme that you can just mess around with? Um, yeah, what are some resources? Sure, I mean, I think 2022 is a good one just because that, that was kind of like the first kind of core theme that came out that supported it in, in detail. I also recommend going to fullsiteediting.com. That's been one of my favorite resources so far and they, they keep it very much up to date and they go into pretty great detail about like what is and isn't supported right now. So I think between those two things, you'll, you'll get a lot of great examples. Mm -hmm. All right, give it up. Thanks, Michelle. That was incredible. Thank you so much.